Hello, it's Paul here from Motors End with another uh, Motors End News Week. Uh, solar car that's going to be serviced in Bosch service centres. Car exports from China on an all time high. Mercedes F1, LAF1 race, Ford driver data, Euro 7 limits, and 911 off road. <laughs> Sono Motors is a new car company and it's getting really hard to keep up with all these new brands but it's a car that has got solar panels on it uh, it's using uh, solar energy to charge the batteries it's the world's first or it will be the world's first when they go to they start to release them in 2023 to be a mass production solar car uh, from what I can work out it's it it it's got a 54 kilowatt battery it can do up to 190 miles and it can do 22 miles based on its solar charge capacity it only comes in black not because of what henry ford said but because uh, obviously it absorbs the light and the sun better in the black and the, with the panels but the interesting thing about this, and this is this is all these little scenarios, these different forms of between manufacturing cars and selling cars. This car is only going to be sold online or in pop-up centres. But the interesting thing on this is they've done a deal with Bosch service centres to service these cars, certainly in Germany initially for the first uh, number of cars that are sold. Uh, they're turning up 50 Bosch service centre technicians to service these cars when they go out into the field and this is the interesting dynamic that's taking place um, whereby you're going to have cars sold into the marketplace but they are not going to have traditional dealerships they're not going to have traditional workshops and this is when i question the the whole reasoning behind serve the bosch service center model really what's coming to the surface all the time is that bosch service centers are going to do lots of deals like this where they're going to actually be the solution for many companies that manufacture cars that don't want conventional workshops don't want conventional dealerships and this is going to be an interesting one the Bosch service centers are going to have a sign on them that says they're a sono a sono motors partner uh, 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 that's going to appear upside outside their buildings so uh that's going to be one to watch over the next year or two how that develops and it's going to be an interesting one for the independent repair sector chinese exports are booming car exports are booming uh they're back to pre-pandemic levels in spite of everything in spite of what we hear from china that they they had I issues with covid and uh, they had issues with chip shortages they're hitting the numbers that they were doing before before the pandemic uh, this year it's it see they'll see the 27,000 27 million cars will be sold will be produced in china this year last month they exported 337 thousand cars that's 46 percent more than last year two-thirds of those are new energy so two-thirds of those are either plug-in hybrid a battery electric or fuel cell um what they're what what they're saying is that the home market is saturated so china is actively out there trying to develop markets export markets and they seem to be doing quite well and we're going to see much much more of this chinese product start to come in to europe now over the next couple of years uh mercedes f1 mercedes uh, f1 had a really tough year this year and they finally got a win last weekend at the brazilian grand prix but there was an interesting build-up to the race and it was nothing to do with the car one of the sponsors on the mercedes f1 car is a company called ftx and ftx was a cryptocurrency company and on thursday there was rumors circulating that there was problems uh, within that company uh, and mercedes came out and said no no issue we're happy we're going to uh, we're going to continue with the brand on our car on friday they took the stickers off the car because the company filed for bankruptcy so interesting one in that such a high profile brand uh, almost almost got to the point of racing a car with the stickers or with the branding of a company that had gone bankrupt staying with f1 uh formula one in america is really starting to take off it struggled for decades to get an audience in america 
they're saying that the drive to survive the program that's that goes out on netflix which will will go to air probably around february next year and we'll have all the f- behind the scenes footage of this season uh it i think it's it's in a second or third season but it seems to be that this a tv program is what's generating the audience for f1 and it seems to be the big driver of audiences in america because they're now going to have a third race so they're now going to have be racing in three cities in america next year they're going to race in la um but the it's said to be the most expensive race in the world uh, grandstand stick tickets two and a half thousand dollars uh corporate ten thousand dollars but there's been massive criticism about the costs so they've finally come out with a three-day pass for only five hundred dollars so um but f1 really starting to take off in america uh, and really get a uh, traction there with an american audience which it hadn't been able to do for a long time another sign of things to come is ford in the u.s is offering an option to customers on some Lincoln product where if they wish to give up some privacy, uh, they can allow their driving data to to be given to an insurance company. So it's connected data has been used to reduce your insurance premium. Um, it's going to be able to monitor your driving behavior. And based on that, the insurance company are going to then be able to give you a discount, uh, well, assuming that you're a safe driver. Uh, maybe increase it if you're not um, but this is another another example of new technology becoming all pervasive in one way but also maybe positive in another way for for being able to balance insurance more accurately uh, based on the on the driving data that's coming back off the connected car the irish government had a target for 2030 of 1 million evs on the roads um, they're after scrapping that they're now saying they're looking to have 30% of the fleet EV by 2030. Um, there, there's 100 million euro being made available over the next three years to put in charging infrastructure. And 15 million of that is to put charging infrastructure in at sports clubs. So uh, slight deviation on the target there. Um, EU separately the eu's banning has has agreed it was proposed but it's now it's been agreed by the 27 member nations to ban ice engines by 2035 they're looking to hit a 55 percent emissions reduction by 2030 over the 1990 limit and they're looking to have neutral by 2050. in conjunction with that europe has sent out the proposals for euro 7 emissions limits and what's really interesting about this up to now every emissions target from euro one two three four five six has only looked at exhaust emissions euro seven will look at exhaust it will look at brakes and it will look at tires how it does that or how that's going to work i do not know also with euro seven uh the compliance on euro six was that the vehicle had to comply to euro six standards for supposedly a hundred thousand kilometers or five years Euro 7 is saying it must comply for 200,000 kilometers in 10 years and there needs to be electronic devices on the car that allow, allow the authorities to check to make sure that the vehicle has been compliant with emission standards tr- up to that point. So they want a history of the data of the car so that there can be no corrupting of the software. Um, also, they're going to ask, they're going to look for uh, an electric warm up on the cat. So it could actually feel like we're going back in time now because it looks like you're going to have a 30 second delay before a car will start from cold start because it's going to have to wait for 30 seconds for the electric heater to heat the cat before the car will be allowed to start Uh, these are proposed to come into play in 2025 and again in an opposite direction porsche are launching a new car at the la motor show which is on on the 18th of november it's an off-road all-terrain 911 uh they're calling it the dakar it's going to have bigger crown ground clearance all-terrain tires it's said to be uh, a two-door sports car with outstanding off-road capabilities don't understand what what the reasoning behind this is but they're launching it in la on the 18th of november 
thanks for watching that's it for another week um again like comment and subscribe if you could if you would uh we are on tiktok we're trying to put up some little innovative snippets but uh trying to work it out trying to do our best if you get a moment go on there and again give us the usual likes on and subscribe to us on on tiktok as well we're trying to get our heads around how to use it and what best way to use it but uh, have a look at that when you get a moment as well thanks and see you next week yeah.